Ronald Reagan is a man of many mistakes. He broke the Boland Amendments and lied to his people repetitively. How did the Iran-Contra affair exchange affect Ronald Reagan's presidency? The Iran-Contra affair exchange made Ronald Reagan one of the greatest presidents to live because of how well he handled the exposure of Iran-Contra. Oliver North, National Security Council staff member involved with the exchange, referred to the Iran-Contra as a misnomer. The Iran-Contra covers two different secret operations. The first was to try and develop and open a revolutionary government of Iran. Part of this was the exchange of arms for hostages. In Brut, Lebanon, several American hostages were being held. The other part was to maintain American support for the Nicaraguan resistance after the U.S. Congress had forced the CIA to abandon the Contras. Iran was known as a state sponsor of terrorism at the time, so the United States could not directly supply them with arms. Instead, the plan was to have Israel ship arms to Iran through an intermediary, Minuchi Gorbenefer, also known as Gorba. Most of the arms are missiles, and a lot of them. The United States would then resupply Israel and receive a payment for the arms. In return, the U.S. was hoping that Iran would influence the Lebanese militant group Hezbollah to release the captured hostages. The affair was exposed on November 3, 1986. Later on in the month, on November 25, Reagan announced the creation of a special review board to investigate the matter. The next day, former Senator John Tower, former Secretary of State Edmund Muskie, and the former National Security Advisor Brent Scowcroft were appointed to Reagan to look into the scandal. Yesterday, I had my first meeting with the special review board. That review board is made up of three men of unquestioned integrity and broad experience in foreign and national security policy. In the meeting with the board, they promised me a tough, no-nonsense investigation. And I promised them the full cooperation of the White House staff and all agencies of the executive branch. The public's reaction to the scandal was harsh. Reagan's approval rating dropped from 63% in late October to 47% in early December 1986, despite the steady decline of unemployment. Public officials from both sides of the aisle publicly criticized the scandal. I think what we, what we saw rises to the level of, of, a, of a default in applying the Constitution of the United States, and I say that with with deep regret in the bicentennial year of the American Constitution. I think it is clear that the president's standing in the nation and with the Congress have been affected by this. On March 4, 1987, Reagan addressed the situation publicly televised from the Oval Office, showing regret during the informative reveal. First, let me say I take full responsibility for my own actions and for those of my administration. As angry as I may be about activities undertaken without my knowledge, I am still accountable for those activities. As disappointed as I may be in some who serve me, I am still the one who must answer to the American people for this behavior. And as personally distasteful as I find secret bank accounts and diverted funds, one of the Navy would say, this happened on my watch. The Special Review Board investigation was followed by congressional hearings focused on National Security Advisor John Poindexter and National Security Council official Oliver North. While the hearings were underway, a criminal investigation was conducted by Lawrence Walsh, a court-appointed independent counsel. Charges were filed against North, Poindexter, and former Defense Secretary Caspar Weinberger. All charges and convictions were eventually dropped or reversed. Reagan was one of the greatest presidents to live because of how well he handled the Iran-Contra affair exchange when it was exposed to the public. He did everything he could to regain America's trust, and he eventually did. One thing he did to regain America's trust was the creation of the Independent Review Board. He did this to show his country he was willing to go through anything to prove his administration was not hiding anything. He did a good job with it, speaking that his popularity went from a huge decline in 1986 and shot up during 1987. One of the three members of the Independent Review Board, Brent Scowcroft, mentioned his view of how the Review Board handled the investigation. I think the President did a good job. Uh, I hope we gave him a, uh, the background to, to do a good job. I think he did. I think he, he made clear that uh, uh, 
that he recognized he was in fact responsible for it, that it did not go according to his own concept of it, and that he had perhaps put too much faith in people and had failed to ask the kinds of searching questions that would have revealed in fact what was going on. Another way Reagan regained America's trust was the outcome of the hearing in 1987. Senator Orrin G. Hatch, Reagan's prominent backer on the Senate committee, says, I'm getting vibrations from all over the country that those watching the hearings on television are becoming more sympathetic to the president's policy. For those of us who feel President Reagan has been right, the hearings are turning out to be a tremendous boost. As soon as the matter was sorted out, the main participants of the scandal were discovered to be John Poindexter and Oliver North. Reagan took decisive action by cleaning house. That day, Reagan accepted John Poindexter's resignation. North was the only government official with knowledge of the funds to the Contras, fighting the Sandinista government in Nicaragua. A government source said, Oliver North authorized the Israelis to do it and didn't tell Reagan. Reagan personally fired Oliver North, which was the right thing to do, since he was the man mostly responsible for the scandal before the Independent Review Board concluded their investigation. On November 25, 1986, while Reagan and his Attorney General, Edwin Meese, were facing the press and TV cameras in the White House briefing room, North was watching it from his office in the old Executive Office building. He recalls this. He then announced that Admiral John Poindexter resigned and that Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North had been relieved of his duties on the National Security Council staff. North did not see it coming. Even the independent counsel, Lawrence Walsh, whose job was to investigate and prosecute the people responsible, found it hard to criticize the president, citing the president's good intentions and his firmly held beliefs. As seen in this clip about Iran-Contra investigation found on a report in January 1994. Public service. President Reagan, on the other hand, was carrying out policies that he strongly believed in. He may have been willful, uh, but he, he at least he thought he was serving the country in what he did. Uh, and the fact that he disregarded certain laws and statutes in the course of it uh, was not because of any, any possibly self-centered purpose. How do you think it will affect their respect? There was also a lot of negative said about Reagan. Malcolm Byrne, who wrote a book on Reagan called Iran Contra, Reagan's Scandal and the Unchecked Abuse of Presidential Power, was one of them. In an interview, he gives his opinion negatively towards the President Reagan. Most people tend to dismiss this as an aberration because they see it as having been run out of the basement of the White House. and. And the president and, and the, the other grown-ups knew nothing about it, but that is patently untrue. And therefore, I think it, it has a lot to say about, uh, about the president and how he uh, conceived a policy and, and uh, how he implemented it and his whole uh, you know, decision-making process and, and management style. Uh, and it really doesn't show him positively in any way whatsoever. More criticism towards Reagan includes that he did not provide the investigators with all the evidence and information they needed. Oliver North and his secretary, Vaughn Hall, shredded documents that showed proof that they were involved with a range of many illegal things regarding the arms sold to Iran and funds to Nicaragua. Even after North was fired, his secretary snuck documents to him. Reagan could have prevented this incident if he had paid more attention to his staff. The Iran-Contra affair made Ronald Reagan one of the greatest presidents to live. His approval may have went down during the outbreak of the scandal, but it went up over the course of the rest of his presidency. He dealt with the scandal and moved forward to do great things. Mr. Gorbachev, open this gate.